in this video we will discuss the problem unit or area of largest region of ones so the problem says that we will be given a grid of n cross m size in which a particular cell will be either 0 or it will be 1 and we need to find the largest unit unit area of largest region of ones okay so we need to find the unit area of largest region of ones and the region of ones is a group of ones which is connected in eight directions that is horizontally vertically diagonally so basically what the problem says is that we have to find like we will be given a matrix which will be of n cross m size and we have to find the largest connected component of ones okay basically you will be given ones and zeros in a grid and you have to find the largest ones that are connected to each other largest number of ones that are connected to each other so basically largest count of ones that are connected to each other that means nothing but the connected component size so you have to return the size of the largest connected component in this part so let us say that if you have been given some example so suppose that if i take an example like this suppose if i take an example like 1 1 okay then 1 1 then 0 0 0 0 and then uh, let's say 0 okay and suppose i take here some more examples like this thing suppose if i take this okay so in this particular example you can see that there are two connected components correct there are two connected components and what are those those two connected components one connected component is this particular component and another component uh, another com connected component is this particular component so what i need to do is i need to return the size of the largest connected component in this question because if you will see so how can i say that these this is a connected component because they are saying that if, if from if i start from here then if i start from a particular cell which is one then i can i i can move in a direction i can move in up direction left direction right direction down direction apart from this i can move in the northeast north northwest southeast southwest so in the eight directions i can move okay so if i'll see here so basically i'll have these opportunities right these cells will be connected to each other now if these cells like if these all cells are one and they are connected to each other so this is the largest area of ones right because this the size of this connected component is nothing but four that is nothing but the number of ones okay so basically i can think of moving in all the eight directions from here now if i see for the second case as well so if i look for this case so for the second connected component so you can see that the size of this connected component is 2 which is uh, which is lesser so that's why i'll not consider it so what i'll what I, what I can basically do here is i can say that i'll start a dfs call and i'll i'll start a dfs from the very first node and basically since there can be a lot of like since there can be more than one connected component in this particular matrix so i'll be iterating for each and every cell and if that cell is not zero then i'll be calling the dfs for it and the dfs will help me to count the size of the connected component how because once i visited a particular cell so i'll mark it as zero why because i i don't want to be in a motion right i don't want to move uh, like uh, from, suppose i was at this node then i move to the left then i move down then i move to uh, like uh, suppose i was at this one okay suppose i was at this one then i move to like then i move to the right after that i move to the down I, after that i move to left after that i move to up then again i follow this cycle so I don't want this kind of cycle right otherwise the DFS will never end and I'll get a time limit exceeded so what I'll do is if I'm starting from this node so I'll mark it as zero okay then I'll try to see can I can I see that like I'll try to go in like in various directions so if I try to go in various directions so like all the eight directions so if I try to go left it is not possible from here if I try to go in this direction not possible if I, to, I try to go in the upward direction not possible if I try to in, go in the right it is possible so I'll go in that direction I'll mark it as zero then for this also I'll go, try to go into the left I'll try to go in this direction I'll to, try to go in the upward direction I'll try to go in this direction and similarly one by one I'll go in all the directions then I'll go in the downward direction as well so I'll mark it as zero after that I'll go to its left so I'll mark it as zero so up till now what is the size the size is nothing but uh, DFS will return me the size one by one so the size here will come out to be four overall right for, for like because if, because if if you see if i'm starting right if i'm starting so basically what what will the value what will the value that will be returned so you can see that if this particular connected component is there so its size is 4 so DSA, dfs will return me nothing but this thing now the challenge here is like how do i write dfs in such a way such that like if i'm writing the dfs okay so if i'm writing the dfs here so should i write suppose i'm st uh, currently i'm standing at i comma j right if if the function is i comma j how do i call in all the eight directions so will i write dfs eight times like this like this every time no i'll not do this because this will take a lot of time so instead of this what i can do is like suppose that i had to move in four directions correct suppose that if i had to move in four directions so what would i what would i do 
if if suppose that i was currently at the dfs of i comma j and i had to move in all the four directions so i will do what like i will do like suppose if if it was four directions right so in that case what i would have done is i plus 1 comma j comma 0 right that is when i'm moving in the downward direction uh, and the rest of rest of the part i'll pass the n and the matrix everything then i'll call the dfs i'll call it for i j plus 1 and i'll pass what i'll pass n comma m comma the grid again right similarly here also i would have passed n comma m comma the grid right after this part i would have called the dfs and i would have called for i minus 1 comma j comma n uh, comma m right comma the grid after that in the other direction also dfs of i comma j minus 1 comma n comma m comma the grid okay that is what i would have done now if i do it this way so basically this is the choice one that i have this is the choice two this is the choice three this is the choice four okay this these are the choices that i am having so initially i'll initialize my i would have initialized my answer as one okay because uh, if if the current i comma j cell i am visiting so that means it is one so i'll count it as one and then uh, for all the other calls also i'll add so in the end what i will do is i'll return nothing but from here i would have returned the number of connected comp uh, the size of the connected component would have been nothing but answer plus count one plus count two plus count three plus count four okay but this is a very hectic code right the code is not optimal like uh, the code is very large and we can optimize it in terms of writing so what i could have done instead is i could have taken a D, like dx and the dy array and what i would have done here is it's suppose this is when i'm moving in four directions only so but here in this problem i have to move in eight directions okay so i'll come to that as well but suppose if i have to move in four directions right but so I, I know that in this problem we have to go in eight directions but suppose first of all what we will do in in four directions we have to go for this question we have to go in eight directions correct but i'll first of all deal with the four directions suppose if i have to deal with four directions and i have to write this problem significant like uh, with a with a lesser code then how will i write it so suppose if i was like if i was calling the dfs so first of all i'll declare dx dy like dx and dy which will be of size four each okay and what i will do is suppose the dfs function is there so dfs function is currently having x and y okay and i have passed n comma m comma the grid as well okay so if if i am out of bound or if the grid uh, of ij is zero then i will simply return a zero but if that is not so so what i will do here i will simply mark initially the answer as one then i will try to call in all the four directions right so what i will do here is i will say that okay k starts from zero k is lesser than four and then k plus plus basically i will declare i will iterate through it in such a way that i can get it how because if suppose currently I'm having x and y. So if suppose that I want to go down. So what will the coordinates of the new x and the new y? Can I say that the new x and the new y coordinate? The new x coordinate if I'm going down. So the new x coordinate will be nothing but x plus 1. And the new y coordinates will be nothing but y plus 0. That is that means the y remain, will remain the same. So basically what I will be doing is. I'll say that okay the new x will be nothing but. It will be nothing but the x plus dx of k. Okay. Where k value will be between 0 to uh, 3. Okay, then new y will be nothing but the y plus dy of k. Okay, so basically if I'm going in the downward direction, so for k is equal to 0, for k is equal to 0, I'll write this as minus 1. And like, like if I'm going down, right, if I'm going down, so I'll write this as plus 1 and this as 0. Okay, similarly, if I'm going, let's say if I'm going in the uh, upward direction, if I'm going in the upward direction, then what, what does that mean? That means that x minus 1 and y plus 0, right. So in that case, I'll write it as nothing but uh, minus 1 and uh, the y value will be nothing but 0 okay so i'll pass 1 right for for k is equal to 1 so 1 by 1 k value will be changing right and if if, if it is like after this what i'll do is i'll call the dfs for then every time i'll call the dfs for the new x new y and the n comma m comma the grid right that this is what i'll be doing but how will i generate all those answers right so how will i generate this thing so basically i can say that after this if suppose that if i'm moving in the leftward direction so if i'm moving in the leftward direction so what changes will i make to the x and the y so if i'm moving to the leftward direction then x will remain the same so x plus zero so basically nothing will get added to x so that's why dx uh, the change in the x will be nothing but zero the addition in the x will be zero and what will be the dy the dy should be nothing but if i'm moving to the left so it should be minus one now because if y is there so minus one should be added so that's why i'll keep a minus one here because new y will be nothing but y plus dy of k d uh, y plus dy of k correct after that if suppose that i'm moving in the rightward direction so that means the new x will be nothing but x plus zero so the x coordinate will remain the same and then what will the corresponding y coordinate the y coordinate will be nothing but the uh like uh like y 
the new y coordinate will be nothing but the y plus 1. So I'll add a plus 1 to it, correct? And that's how I'll be moving in the 8 directions. But like what will I do after that? So suppose I have uh, I have moved in the 8 directions. So I'll simply say that if this DFS call is done, so answer plus is equal to like every time I'll add whatever the DFS call is, is returning. I initially have the answer initialized as 1, then I'll do answer plus is equal to this DFS call. And then after this, from this function, I'll return this particular answer. And also I'll check for validity, right? I'll also check for validity of the current cell. And if it's invalid or if it's zero, then I'll return zero from here. And if that is not so, so if I visited a particular i comma j cell, right, that is x comma y cell, so I'll mark it as zero, so that I don't visit it again. Because if it is one, so then I've counted it and I'll mark it as zero. Okay, this is one thing. But how do I move in eight directions, right? Because the problem was saying that we have to move in eight directions. So basically, we have already discussed that how we can move in four directions. Uh, so basically, what will happen here if I have to move in eight directions? Okay, so will be starting from zero. K will be lesser than nothing but 8 and I I can do simply a K plus plus here, right? And then what I will be doing here is I'll simply say that initially I'll mark the answer as 1, okay? And then what I'll be doing is I'll say that, okay, answer plus is equal to nothing but like DFS of the new X comma the new Y uh, comma the N comma M comma the grid also I'll pass here, right? So what will be the new X? The new X will be nothing but it will be something like uh, X plus DX of K and the new y will be nothing but the y plus dy of k okay so how will i declare it so let's say that if i have to declare like if i have to decide how will i write it so basically dx of 8 i'll declare globally and dy of 8 also i'll declare globally right and then first of all the four directions will remain the same because if i'm moving in the upward direction downward direction rightward direction or leftward direction these direction will remain the same so first of all i'll have let's say zero and then one okay this means that if i'm going towards the right direction uh, other thing that i can have is zero and minus one this means i'm going into the leftward direction other thing that i can have is x is equal to one and y is equal to zero in that case i'm moving in the downward direction if x is minus x x decreases by one and y remains the same then i'm moving in the upward direction other than this what can happen if x increases by one and y also increases by one so that means i'm moving in this particular direction right this is nothing but x plus one comma y plus one correct after this if i'm moving in this direction suppose so that means i'm moving backwards right if i'm moving to the left like if i'm moving to the left like if i'm moving to the right side and the upward side so if i'm moving to the upward side so first of all x will decrease by one and uh, since i'm moving to the right so y will increase by one correct after that if suppose that i'm moving in the uh, upward direction and the leftward uh, like upward and leftward okay so upper left so in that case what will be the direction uh, if i'm moving up so that means minus one and if i'm moving to the left so that also means minus one okay what is the uh, what is the final direction that is left so if i'm moving in the downward like if i'm moving in the downward direction like bottom and the left direction so in that case i'll write it as one comma minus one so that's how i'll organize all the structures here right and then i'll be running the dfs to count the number of uh, elements uh, the number of ones in the current connected component okay so that is what we'll be doing in this particular question so let us quickly try and implement the code for it first of all what i'll be doing is i'll simply say that first of all i'll find the size of the grid so uh, n is equal to nothing but the grid dot size okay then i'll find the m so m is equal to nothing but uh, grid of zero dot size because i'll find the number of rows and the number of columns once i found the number of rows and the number of columns so what i will do is for int i start from zero i is lesser than n then i can do an i plus plus after this what i will be doing is for like i can say that uh, int my j will start from zero and j will be lesser than the m and then j plus plus and what we'll be doing from here is we will simply say that uh, like first of all we need to mark our initially the mx value as zero the maximum uh, size uh, like the maximum size of the connected component as zero that is containing ones as zero then what i'll do here is i'll simply say that if the uh, grid of ij is equal to one so if it is not zero right if it is one then uh, then in that case we will simply say that we need to call the dfs function from this i comma j comma the n comma m and the grid part okay and this dfs I'm, as i'm saying it will return me the count it will return me nothing but the count that is the number of connected components in this particular part so after i get it the number of connected components so i'll compare it with the max so a max will be nothing but maximum of max comma the count uh, of the size of the current connected component of ones okay after this once i have stored it so i'll simply return the maximum answer from it okay and now in this region what i need to do is i need to write a recursive function here right so what i like uh, i need to write a dfs function basically here and in this i'll be passing the let's say the x coordinate the y coordinate then i'll be passing the n and then i'll be passing the m then i'll be passing the grid as well so i'll pass the grid like this vector of uh, vector int 
and then it will be nothing but the ampersand grid after i've passed this thing as well so i'll check if it is valid or not so if uh, suppose that i fall out of the grid like if i is lesser than zero or if j is lesser than zero or if i is equal equal to n or if j is equal equal to m so if i fall out of the grid in any way then i'll return a zero or if it happens that suppose that the current uh, grid of ij is valid but if the current grid of ij is zero so if it is zero then i'll not be visiting it so i'll return a simply a zero from here right otherwise if it is valid then what i will do is i'll first of all mark the grid of ij as one uh, as zero if it was one then i'll mark it as zero and then what i will do is i'll declare an answer so answer will be nothing but initially i'll mark the answer as one because the current cell uh, like the like uh, okay so since I've taken x and y, so I should write it like this. If the x coordinate is lesser than 0 or if the y coordinate is lesser than 0 or if the x coordinate is equal to n or if the y coordinate is equal to m or if it happens that the grid of x, y, the x, x, y coordinate, if it is equal to 0, then, then I'll return 0. Otherwise, what I will be doing is if it is not 0, then I'll count it as 1. Uh, like I'll count it in the answer and I'll mark it as 0 here, right? And then what I will be doing is I'll simply mark the answer right like this. And then what we need to do is we need to run a loop like for int k starts from 0, k is lesser than 8. And then we'll do a k plus plus simply. After this, what we will do is we'll simply say that the answer plus is equal to nothing but answer plus is equal to the DFS of uh, the DFS. I'll first of all calculate the new x, then the new y. So the new x will be nothing but the current x plus the dx of k. Don't worry, I'll declare the dx and the dy. And the new y will be what? New y will be nothing but the y plus dy of k. Okay. After this part, what I will do is I'll declare the new x. Like I'll pass the new x, I'll pass the new y. In the function, I'll pass the n, I'll pass the m, and I'll also pass the grid here. Okay. That is what I'll be doing. And once uh, the DFS call is done for all the values, then in that case, I'll, I can simply return nothing but the answer from this function. So let's uh, declare our dx and the dy. So what I'll be doing here is I'll declare them as globally. You can also declare them locally in the same function. So uh, dx, uh, like d I'll declare the dx and the dy correspondingly. So in this part, what we'll do is first of all, dx is declared. Then let's declare the dy as well. Dy for all the eight uh, directions as well. So what I will be doing here is uh, simply first of all like 0 comma 0 comma 1 comma minus 1 right. So as I've already discussed if 0 like if suppose that 0 comma 1 is there. So if uh, x is uh, 0 and y is if x is incremented by 0 and y is incremented by plus 1. So that means I'm moving in the right direction. Okay. If uh, x is uh, in in uh, increased by 0 like x does not change and y is incremented by minus 1. So this means that I'm moving in the leftward direction. If uh, x is equal to 1 and suppose y is equal to 0. So that will simply indicate that I am going to move in the downward direction and if uh, x is equal to minus 1 and y is equal to 0 so that will simply indicate when i am moving in the in the direction that is nothing but the up uh, like that is nothing but the upward direction okay so this is how i'm trying to declare it after this part like uh, after this part suppose it will be 1 okay 1 will be when i'll be move like 1 comma 1 when i'm moving in the rightward downward direction and it will be uh, like uh, other direction will be suppose uh, like other direction will be this thing like let's consider the cases so one direction is when i am moving in this one that is x plus one comma y plus one okay then another direction can be the, the another direction that i have taken is well, suppose minus one like uh, minus one and one so this means that i'm doing x minus one comma y plus one right and the other directions that i can have is like this the downward direction so if i'm moving x plus one and I'm, y is moving to the left so y plus y minus one okay so that means x becomes one and y is nothing but minus one there okay now another direction will be nothing but the upward direction so that means x minus one and y is also going to the left so that means y minus one so in that this case i'll write uh, nothing but here i'll write minus one and here also i'll write a minus one here uh okay i think i'm doing some basic mistake here uh, because the size does not need seems to be the same. Okay. Yeah, one more bracket was applied. Yeah, right one more colon was applied Let's try and compile this code to see if it works on the samples or we have made any other mistake here Okay, we are getting the same expected output as 5 for this case because you can see that the size of this connected component is nothing But triple ones are together then this all one is also together because you, you can move in the down direction and you can also move in the di diagonal direction so that's why that's why in this case you can see for the sample test case also these three uh, these red ones are together that is nothing but triple one then this one and this one 
now what i'll do is i'll try to submit this code to check if it is working on all the test cases or not so you can see that our solution was able to pass all the test cases in the very first go not talking about the time complexity of this code so since we are visiting ev uh, like every cell exactly once so the time complexity of my code will be nothing but order of n cross m not talking about the space complexity so since i'm not using any extra space so the space complexity will not be taken but since i'm using a dfs approach so for that the auxiliary space for the dfs can be at most n cross m so you can see that the, the space complexity will be nothing but the recursive stack space that i'll be taking other than this i've not taken any extra visited array or anything so this is the problem in case if you understood the explanation and the code make sure to hit the like button comment down understood as well thank you